So today I'm going to show you how to do a jigsaw or puzzle lino cut or block print. Um, it is where you use a single lino block. So I'm using a one of the soft rubbery type of uh, lino blocks and I will carve this out and I will print it in two different colors at once. So the flowers, the poppies will be in a red color and then the different greenery and the vase that will all be green and I'll print that in one go and it should hopefully look fantastic. So I sketched out, um, actually before I talk about that, if you've never carved a block print before, go check out some of my links um, to of all the basics of how to um, carve a block print and then you can come back here and learn how to do the jigsaw part. So I've sketched out my design. When you're doing a design, you can uh, feel free to imitate this one um, or you can do your own, but if you're doing your own, make sure that your design is easy to reassemble into pieces because you will be cutting the flowers into one piece and then the this green and this section, which will also be green, that will be two different pieces. And I'm gonna show you a couple examples of other block prints that I've done. So this is mountain over a lake that is three different pieces and I do each of these as a different uh, color. So here is the final print that I do. Um, this one is nice and easy to assemble because once you have these all three inked, you can just slide them together. So it's important. So whatever you design, make sure that your pieces will just slide together. So obviously straight line, easy. Uh, this one, it's a jagged line, but there's nothing that obstructs it from just sliding together. I'm gonna show you one that I wasn't so successful with. This is a tree over the ocean with some rocks. Now the issue I have with this one is you can't slide them together because this, you run into an issue and then you have to kind of push it in, but you can't push it in because you have ink on it. So you cannot do that. This part slides together nicely. Um, so if I were to do this again, so this is, uh, this print right here was an unsuccessful one, um, but it's the only one I have left because I sold all of the ones that did turn out successfully, but it was so hard to print that I'm never printing it again. If I were to redo it, I would uh, not have that part. So I would just have the ocean start somewhere on these rocks here, and then it would uh, become an easy one to deal with again. So just keep that in mind as you're doing your design. Uh, but with this one, we should be able to do it so that uh, it slides together with this in the center, and then a piece here and a piece here, and we should be good. Now I uh, will start carving. I'm not gonna go through the whole carving process. Um, you can check out some of my other uh, links on the basics of lino cut. Um, but if I'm gonna give you one tip, start with your smallest uh, lino tool. Do one uh, kind of cut all the way around your whole design and then uh, continue carving. And then we'll still just have one block all in one piece by the end and then uh, once I'm done that I will show you how to carve it into the different pieces so that we can ink them all separately. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay I finished carving and now it's ready to cut it into the separate pieces so that we're able to ink up the flowers and the items that we want to be green separately. So you'll need an exacto knife or a precision knife. You want something that you can do a fairly fine cut on because there are some areas like right here where it connects that um, we need to be able to be very precise with our cuts and then something so that uh, you don't cut through your table or anything like that. So I have a self-healing mat, just a little mini one here. Um, you can use a cutting board. Um, if you do a lot of sewing, you might have a big self-healing mat. Okay, so basically you just take your X-Acto knife and you cut it. Yes, I know, great instructions, just, just cut it. So you want to hold your X-Acto knife straight up and down and then slowly drag it. You wanna be quite careful between the flower and this stem, and then cut along where these two stems connect with that flower. Now, at this point, oh, I guess you should make sure that this is connected properly. I've been using this one for quite some time and I have never had it come off. Let me just fix that. Okay. So now at that point, I've 
cut a line between where this flower and these areas that will be green connect. So now I don't need to continue alongside the flower, but I can just go in and just cut kind of straight here. And then do this similar on this side so I can see where that crack is, where I already did the cut. And I'm just going to go at a bit of an angle. Now let's see if it's disconnected. Okay, not 100%. And because this is kind of a thicker material, I can take um, some extra slicing to get it disconnected. So just kind of hold it apart. Be careful. You don't want to cut yourself. Just slice. And this stuff's rubbery, so you can almost kind of pull it a little bit and stretch it. And there you go. There's our first piece. So those will slide together really nicely. Now let's do this piece here where we want to disconnect this from the, uh, the stem from the flower. So again, just kind of hold your knife essentially straight up and down and just slowly disconnect where the stem and the flower meet. And then I kind of turn and do this all in one slice. And now that's disconnected. Now here, I'm going back in where um, I had started my cut and cutting around. Now remember, we want to make sure that your piece will slide in and out. Oh, not quite disconnected. Let me just pull it apart a little. Just get to those last slices. Sometimes you can flip it like this. And just, if you flip it upside down, just be careful not to go too deep because you don't want to accidentally cut where you don't want it to. And you can kind of stretch it when it's this rubbery material. And almost done. There we go. Okay. So that, once it's inked up, will slide right in and that will slide right in. Now there's one more piece I'm going to cut off and that's this bottom part where I don't have anything because I don't, I don't need that and I don't want uh, it to kind of be distracting when I'm trying to line up the actual uh, print on paper. So I'm just going to freehand this. Um, if you want, you can always cut up against a ruler, but uh, in this case, probably don't need to. And then I'm just gonna connect here so I can kind of keep it a little bit even. And there we go, slightly, there we go. So now I have this. And if you want, you can uh, cut off a lot of this other extra parts. Um, and that can be, and I'll just do a little bit here, that can be handy so that you're not accidentally getting ink on these parts. They can be a little bit uh, challenging. Just remember when you do this, um, and you might have some issues kind of lining things up because you're not gonna have as many straight lines, but I'm gonna keep this line straight and that line um, right here mostly straight. I'm just going to cut this off. Okay. Oops. Okay. So now we have that guy right there. So now I'm going to set up the ink and we'll get to the inking and printing stage and see what this actually looks like. Okay. I have my ink all set out and ready to go. I'm using water-based ink. This is the Schmincke Aqua Lino Drug, uh, Lino Print ink. Um, you can use Speedball. I brought some Speedball, but I only have a couple colors, so I didn't want to do this print in that. But Speedball is really common if you're in North America. Um, both will work well. You can use oil-based ink um, for block printing, just as long as it's a block printing ink. So I did some mixing. The magenta was pretty bright, so I added a bit of yellow to the magenta. And then I didn't have a green, so I just took some of the blue and the yellow and made myself a green. Okay, so now... You want to ink 
these separately. Oh, I also have some printmaking paper here. So I need to ink these separately. I need to roll out my ink using a brayer. And this can just take a moment. And then you just roll it out. This part is fun because you get to see what you've been working on. Sometimes it can be hard to picture it until the moment you get ink rolled out onto it. And make sure there's a few thin layers. Okay, now I'm gonna put that to the side and then I'm gonna do the green. So roll that out. Sometimes it just takes a moment of extra uh, rolling just to kind of get it just to the right consistency. So I'll start with this one first. And then this leaf. So this part, if you've done block printing before, it's super easy because you've uh, it's really the same process. It's just on a couple of different pieces. I'm just going to add another couple layers. Okay, now attach these together and you can see what we're going to end up with. Now I'm using 5x7 paper. This happens to have measurements on it, and this is just slightly more than five by seven, so I can just kind of judge where this should lay so that it'll be somewhat centered. Okay. Now I always check to see that I have the right side of the paper down. And then let's very carefully it straight down and then you don't want to move it. Take the baron, very careful because you don't want to smudge it. If it happens, it happens. That's why you have more than one piece of paper to print on. <laughs> Just run your baron over all the different parts of your print so that it's nicely applied. You don't need a nice glass baron like this one. You can use a wooden spoon. I've even used my hand. Okay, now the moment of truth. Let's see how it looks. That's not bad at all. Now, um, this is the first print, so you can see a little bit of uh, spotting. I did apply a decent amount of ink so that the first one was nice and strong. But uh, as you print more and more, you, especially with the, the same one, the same block, uh, that'll kind of go away and you'll get some nice texture. So there you go, uh, jigsaw print, nice and easy and uh, really, really elevates um, a block print from a single color and it's pretty easy to do two different colors.